Hi, it's Terry here again. Um, today I'm going to be looking at the January 2020 CSEC chemistry paper. Okay. So this is question one. Now, the question went like this. The rate of reaction of magnesium with a solution of dilute sulfuric acid can be investigated by measuring how long it takes for a specific volume of gas to be produced. Andrew conducted two experiments to investigate the factors that, are, that can affect the rate of reaction between magnesium and sulfuric acid. In experiment 1, magnesium strips were added to 50 cm cube of a 2 mole per dm cube sulfuric acid. All right, so in this reaction, what we're doing is mixing magnesium with sulfuric acid, right, in a 250 cm cube conical flask. And the volume of gas over a period of six, six minutes was measured, and some measurements are shown in the diagram, right? So basically, what we are looking at here is um, a gas being produced. So we are reacting magnesium plus sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4, right? Now, when we add a metal plus an acid, we should get a salt and hydrogen gas. In this case, we're going to get magnesium sulfate, right, plus hydrogen gas, H2. So this is solid. And this is aqueous. This is, this will be aqueous as well because it's going to be in solution. And this will be gas. Right, so this is the reaction here, and what we are producing in this case is hydrogen gas. Now, in this particular experiment that they are describing here, essentially what we have, we have a conical flask. Looks like this. All right, and then coming out of the conical flask. We have a syringe, right? So this is what we have happening here. So this is a this is the two fifty cm cube flask they're talking about. We have inside here. We have magnesium. So this is my magnesium solid, and we also have H two SO four. Right, and in this case here, it's 50 cm cube of sulfuric acid. So we have 50 cm cube, and the concentration of the acid is 2 mole per dm cube. Right, so when you have a question like this, try to understand what is being given in the question. Right, so what they've done, they've given us some diagrams here. So after 0.5 minutes, this is what the volume is. This here, after one minute. This is what the volume of gas is. After two minutes, this is what the volume of gas is. All right? So let's go to the question now and see what they're asking. So the first part, define the term rate of reaction. So the rate of a reaction is the change. So it's the change in concentration. It's a change in concentration of the reactant or product with respect to time. So this is the definition that they're looking for. This is the answer that they want. Right? Mathematically what this means is that rate right, is proportional to my change in concentration of reactant or product over time, right? So you're not expected to know this formula here, right? But the definition is the change in concentration of the reactant or product with respect to time. Let's go on to part B. So in part B here now, they said from the gas syringes displayed in figure one, Record the volume of gas produced in these pieces. Right, so they've given us a table. So 
we need to figure out the volume for 0 0.5 after 0 0.5 minutes. That's this syringe we're looking at here. Now, we need to try to read off and see what's happening here. So this is from, this is 0, and this is 10 here. So we're increasing downwards. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that is 6. So the volume of gas produced here is 6 cm cube. Then we need to work out for 1 minute. Again, we're counting downwards. So that is 11. And for this one here, we're counting downwards again. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's about 16.5. Right? So what I'm doing, I'm reading off the values on the syringes. After 3 minutes, we are at... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So that is 19. 19 cm cube. And then for four minutes now, reading of this, and that is 20 cm cube. Alright? So we've collected the data from the syringes. So that is the volume of gas produced. Now, in the next part, part two, they want us to plot a graph. So essentially what we're going to do, we're going to take the information we got from the table. All right. So the first value is 0 against 0. They've already plotted that. So we have 0 0.5 against 6. So let's do that. So this is 0 0.5 and 6 is somewhere here. All right. That is 6. The next one is 1 against 11. So we go 1 against 11, that's about here, so. Alright. Next one we have is 2 against 16.5. So this is 2. And 16.5 uh, is about here. Alright, that's about 16.5. The next one is 3 against 19. So that's about here. All right. And then the last one is, well, the last two, five and six, four, five and six, they're all 20. So four, five and six, they're all 20. All right. So what we've done here is we've plotted the points. Now you need to be careful when you plot any points, try to plot them as accurately as possible. Next thing we need to do, we need to draw a smooth curve Right, it's a little tricky to draw. Right, you're gonna use a pencil and try to draw it as smoothly as you can. Right, so this is what the graph is supposed to look like, which is a typical um, rate curve for um, a product. Right, in this case, we're producing hydrogen gas. So the next part, they said from your graph, determine the time taken for the reaction to be completed. Now, so when the reaction is complete, right, in this particular instance here, no more hydrogen gas is going to be produced, right? So if you look carefully, at 4 minutes, we have 20 cm cube, 5 minutes, 20 cm cube, 6 minutes, 20 cm cube. So at this point here, when we reach 20, we're not producing any more of the hydrogen gas. So therefore, we're going to read off this time, and we're going to say the time taken for the reaction to complete is 4 minutes. Right? Now, during which time interval is the reaction rate the fastest? Now, let's go back to the graph. Now, when you have a rate curve like this, in this case, we have volume in cm cube, and we have time in minutes. All right? And the curve is doing this. Now, to get the rate of the reaction, what we do, we look at the gradient of the curve at different points. All right? Now, at t equals 0, all right? My rate is fastest. All right? And there's a reason for that. 
because when you mix all your reactants at equal to zero, their concentration is at their greatest. And if their concentration is at their greatest, it means that the rate of reaction is going to be greatest at that point, right? From the graph, what that, tell, what that means is that the slope, right, the slope at equal zero is the greatest at equal zero. So therefore, the rate is greatest there. If we move a little further down, let's say about here so, and we look at the gradient here, the graph is getting less steep, which means my rate is decreasing, right? And it's decreasing because my reactants are being used up and their concentrations are decreasing. And eventually, in the last phase, right, the slope becomes zero. Right? And when the slope becomes zero, it means the rate of reaction is zero. The reaction has stopped at that point. Right? So from um, a product curve, right, like what we have here, we can find the rate by looking at the gradient of the curve at different points. So the question is asking, during which time interval was the rate of reaction the fastest? Right? Now we're just using the data that we have, if we go back to this here, right? Between 0 and 0 0.5, so between 0 and 0 0.5, that is between this interval here, right? Between here and here. My rate is the fastest, right? The access for interval. If they had access for time, we would have said t equals 0. But the access for an interval, so I'm going to use between 0 and 0 0.5 as my interval. So, but this part here, what I would say is 0 to 0 0.5 minutes. That is where my rate is fastest. Right? And they want us to explain the answer. So, several things you need to say here. Um, the concentration of the reactants are their greatest Right during this time, during this interval, right. So therefore, you have more reactant particles present so if you have more particles present, it means that you have more collisions more collisions per unit time hence fastest rate alright so any explanation along these lines will get you your marks alright the key thing is that the concentration is at its greatest therefore you have more reactant particles present and therefore you have more collisions per unit time and therefore the rate is fastest at that in that time interval. From your graph, determine the volume of gas produced at 2.5. So essentially all the action you to do here is to read off from your graph what happens at 2.5, right? So let me see, let me try to draw this graph a little, a little better. Alright, so let's say I'm going to use this here as my volume, right? When you actually accurately draw it, please use the volume that you get, right? So this here is um, 15, 16, 17, let's say 17.5 cm cube, right? Give me one sec. To this question in class. Okay, so we'll use it as, what did I just say? 2.5, 15, 16. Yeah, so we'll just use it as 17.5, okay? We'll look at that. So let's say 17.5 CMQ, right? You can, you may get a slightly different value based on the reading that you get. Now, they said using your answer in B part 6, determine the number of moles of gas produced 
at 2.5 minutes. All right, so when students see mole questions, they get intimidated, they get scared, they don't know how to do moles. But I can assure you that moles is a topic that is very easy once you know what you're doing. So look at what they're saying. They're saying 22.4, so one mole of a gas occupies 22.4 dm cube at standard temperature and pressure, right? Now, what does that really mean? It means that 22. 0.4 dm cube right of a gas contains one mole right so we know the volume of gas we produce we produce 17.5 cm cube but the thing is they've given us this in dm cube so to convert this dm cube into cm cube we're just going to multiply by a thousand so this will be two two four zero right so that's one two right so 22,400 cm cube contains one mole right so now we want to figure out for the this volume that we got here which is 17.5 cm cube contains right what we're going to do here we're going to say that is equal to 17.5 Multiply by 1 over 22,400. Alright. And that will give me... Give me a sec. Seventeen point five divided by 22,400. And that will give me... Let's put this answer in standard form. 7.8 by 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 10 to the minus 4 moles. All right. So this is the amount of moles of gas produced. So all we've done is taken the volume here, 17.5 cm cube, and we've figured out how much moles we're producing. All right. The next part. Andrew wanted to identify the gas produced. He placed a lighter splint in a sample of a gas which extinguished a squeak with a squeaky pop. Did you see the identity of the gas? All right, so you all need to know your test for your gases. Um, if we get a squeaky pop, right, we are what we are confirming here is the presence of hydrogen gas, right, as I've indicated at the beginning of the question. So hydrogen gas is the gas that we are producing. The next part now. Andrew's second experiment required the use of the same mass of magnesium but in powdered form instead of strips. State the factor that Andrew is now investigating. So remember he is trying to inv investigate what are the factors affecting the rate of reaction between magnesium and sulfuric acid. So he is using powdered magnesium instead of strips. Therefore the factor that he is investigating is surface area. Right? So he's trying to determine how surface area, surface area affects the rate of a reaction. The next one, write a balance equation including state symbols for the reaction between magnesium and sulfuric acid. So I, I gave you this in the beginning. So it's Mg solid plus sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4 aqueous, produces magnesium sulfate. Right, AKS plus H2 gas. Right, this is essentially what we need to show. And they said the last part state one factor other than the factor investigated by Andrew which can affect the rate of reaction. So, two things he investigated. Right, um, what's the first one? Okay, so no, in the first experiment, he measured the rate, right? So in the second experiment, he used powdered instead of um, instead of strips. So what other factor, right? So another factor you can use is how temperature affects rates, right? So it is one one factor. You can put temperature, right? Um, you can use concentration if you want, right? So he can do the same experiment, 
but um, alter the concentration of the sulfuric acid. All right. So that is basically my solution to the January 2020 paper, question 